verse 37. For their heart was not right with them. Neither were they steadfast in his covenant. For he, being full of compassion, forgave their enemies. And destroyed them not. He gave many times, and he did many a way, and did not stir up all of his life. For he remembered that they were the flesh. When the passable way, how did they provoke him in the wilderness? Read him in the desert. Yea, they turned back and kicked his God and lived in the world. They remember not his hands nor his days when he delivered them from the enemy. They brought his signs in Egypt and his wonders in the field of God. Turned their rivers into blood and their blood. And divers sought to fly with them, but the survivor of false was destroyed. Give also their increase unto the character of their labor and the blood. He destroyed their lives with me and their sickness and wisdom and fault. Give up their cattle also to the native of their flock. Cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath, and indignation, and trouble. And the eagle ain't for the moment. And they away it was angry. They had not their soul, but they had to keep their life open to the rest of us. Then in the 37th verse, in the record, in the 50th verse, this is on 78. Dear Father, we come praying now that your Holy Spirit search out our hearts and see if there's any wicked ways in us and cleanse us and purge us that we might be what you want to be. And now, Father, we pray for this service that you'll get out of what you want. Pray, O oh God, that Take thy servant, loose his tongue, illuminate his mind, give us holy unction for the hour. We pray, God, that you'll bless every soul to speak. We pray that thy blessing shall be upon those who have come this way. Give them safe journey. Thank you for the safe journey of those that's already arrived. We pray it with our in Jesus' name. Your Holy Spirit shall have full sway. During these days, may lives be changed, may souls be saved, may best lives be healed. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that the Holy Spirit shall have complete control of this service today. Let the devil have any place in and our Father, we pray throughout the week that our God shall be upon us. We pray this morning for those of our number who are sick, his never, his heart will open up, that you will be with them and strengthen them. Thank you, friends, and pray regarding this morning. We praise thy name for that. And our Father, we pray now that you just take over. The fourth verse, first verse, verse 41 of 7, 8th chapter of the Yea, they turned their back and tainted God and delivered the Holy One of Israel. Yea, they turned their back and delivered the Holy One of Israel. I want to talk to you about that this morning. That unbelief limits God. Where God is mighty, God is the Almighty, God is the Great I Am, God is the God of all creation. By Him and 
departing the law. And yet we as his creatures can let it go. And on the surface that sounds like a shocking thing. But we are constantly limited with love as his creatures. We're the only of God's creation that those can it go. Nothing else has any limitation. But we limit God a lot of times, and that's what I want to talk to you about. Our unbelief that limits God. We stop to recognize, turn back and think in God and limit to the other one of this. You and I and others limit in God. The great I am, Lord Jehovah, and look who we are. When we find ourselves limited in God, first of all, we limit God by setting bounds of His operation. We set the bounds as to where God operates. Take in the book of Numbers, the 14th chapter. And all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried, and the people wept that night. All the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God we had died in this wilderness? Wherefore hath the Lord brought us up unto this land, to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be afraid? Were it not better for us to return unto Egypt? He said, one to know, let us make a captain, let us return to Egypt. In other words, it's getting so much in the lives of these Israelites that they said, it'd be so much better if we could just turn back to Egypt rather than serve God, rather than go all out for God and live for God. We remember the good old cucumbers, onions, and garlic that we ate over in Egypt freely. Now our souls dry up on the land. We've got a lot of Christians today that have the turning back attitude. And as a result, they say, well, I didn't have to suffer all of this when I was in sin. I could enjoy all of these things when I was in sin. And I'd just like to throw it all down and go back and live like I used to. We must stop to recognize as many Christians today that's got that attitude because of the difficulty, because of the responsibility. They like to just go back to Egypt, live off the cucumbers, onions, and garlic rather than to have the manna from heaven. Cease to satisfy them, in other words. We live it in such a they are seducing spirits and doctrines of devil and the inflaming of the flesh and desires, the appetites of this world. And they'd like to go back. That's what the children of Egypt are saying. Well, this gives a captain to go back over there. Throw it all in so far as God's concerned. Let's go back. We don't operate in the bounds of God's operation. God said, come ye out from among them and be separated. We don't want to come out. We don't want to be separated. We want to be the lamb on the hedges. And as long as we hedge members and all along as we hang on to the world, we live it in God. Because we don't want to get out of the bounds of our own little selfish crowd and selfish ways and selfish attitudes. Selfish, this, that, and the other. So as a result, 
devils through all of the seducing spirits and doctrines of devil and inflaming of the flesh and the temptations and the carnality of this world. He's trying to get the Christian element to be dissatisfied with what God's given. Trying to get them to want to go back on God. A lot of people are miserable because they're Christians just now. They feel so sorry for themselves because they got saved and got caught in this sin. All the All the time. It's so hard. It's so difficult to live a Christian life and have nothing to plan. When we could have the good old cucumbers, onions, and garlic, and good old leeks, and metals, and that way, we could eat us mess up. God can't operate his business for us wanting to go back. That's our problem. We're living in God. We don't want to go into the kingdom. We don't want to possess the land God's got for us. We don't want to move forward. We want to back up. It's a little difficult, a little sacrifice, a little suffering. Move out for God and the head where God wants us to go. We become such softness and sisters and worldly. We don't want to suffer anything anymore. Let everybody do his own thing. Don't, don't withhold anything from anybody. Let everybody live like they want to. The television media has so brainwashed America today that nothing's wrong. There's no more any restrictions on Let us go. Leave us alone. Let us live like we want to. Act like we want to. God is many people that kind of life. He can't use us. He's trying to get us to go forward. We're trying to get him back it up again. A lot of folks crippled again. Then, my friends, we are limiting the great God of this universe. Not all of us set in bounds if we cannot operate Him. God can operate in certain bounds. If He did, He'd dishonor Himself. What I'm saying is, God can sense Himself. God can keep the true awareness and unrighteous living. Can't do it. God can't operate in that area of rebellion. That can help the carnality of the wilderness. Then by confusing, confining his ability to effect certain purposes of work. We suppose that we've gone so far that God can help us. The underlying principle of Christians today is we are hopelessly defeated. And because we've got that hopeless defeated, there's no chance for us. There's no hope for us. That limited God that said we're so guilty, we're so wicked, and we're so caught up in this world, it's impossible for God to deliver us. And use us. That's not so. But a lot of Christians are taking that attitude. But we will throw in the towel and quit. We're beyond redemption. We're beyond hope. And that's limited God. We're saying, God, you can't help us out of this man. We've got such a mess. We've got such a condition. No hope. That's what damns the sinners. They feel like God can't save them. When a sinner doubts God and feels like he can't save him, he won't ever get saved. And when Christians get to feel it, we've gone so far and sin's got so deep, there's no hope for America. We are like a sinner. We're saying, God, you are helpless. You can't do it. You're too far gone. That's not so. We need to recognize that. So we are saying, we suppose we are so guilty, so great in sin, we can't receive any help from God. God offered to come to these Israelites, that is, to me. And God offers to come to our rescue. 
rid of that thorn in his flesh. But that wasn't God's way. Well, you and I all the time want to dictate to God and tell God how to do it. Hey, if God don't do it our way, we whimper and whine and murmur and throw up our hands. Instead of saying, oh, thank God. I'm trying to tell you how to do You don't know. You know I don't know how to do it. And I'll work with you. I'll go along with you. We limit God by trying to tell God how to do it. That's my problem. And I have a suspicion of some of your problems. Won't tell God how to do it. Won't tell God how to do it. Instead of saying, God, you do it. And you use me to help. And because God will do it our way, we throw up the way. We want to go back. We feel so important. We feel so smart. We feel that we know more than God knows. Therefore, God ought to come and see and come down on our own. Not so. We do it God's way for it's left God. Limited God. I'm trying to dictate the God. How? Not only that, but our lack of faith. We live in a God by the lack of faith. The promises are God of rain. God's made promises. There's no need to be going into them. Jesus said, I died, I was buried, and I rose again to the dead. The whole life of sin, the promises of my Father. We've got all sorts of promises of God's name. But we don't have faith in what God promised. If we have faith in what God promised, we move out and act on it. But we don't believe that God's able to keep His promises. Notice what is said in the book of Acts. He could do no mighty works among them because of the hardness of their hearts and their unbelief. My brother, sister, there is nothing wrong with God, nor the Lord Jesus Christ, nor the Word, nor the Holy Spirit. Do not change a bit. It's our faith that's weakened. It's our cold heartedness that's come. That's where it's at. We need to face it this morning. We live it in the great God of this universe in the performance of His miraculous ministry because we don't have faith enough to believe that God did. Hey, the devil's got us Christian bleeding that is sleeping on God. It's a hopeless case you do go. Now let me do something to say. But in last winter, that's our problem. My problem. And I suspicion of some of your problems. You start to realize the promises of God. In other words, if you please. Let's turn over and see what Brother James said. James 1 6. But let him ask in faith, nothing waver. For he that wavered is like a wave of the sea, driven with wind and tossed. James said, Get a faith that won't waver. Don't be like the waves on the sea and the wind hits her to be loved. You and I are paid to sort of wavering. We think we've got paid for about that time comes the puff of the devil's wind. And our faith is gone. Drift. Jesus said, have faith in God. Say we will not believe our own. And if you don't doubt in your heart, the mouth will get to work. But ah, we, when we see the mountain, <laughs> the wind blows out there like a wave on the sea. We're living in God this morning by the lack of faith. He could do no mighty work because of what? Their unbelief and the hardness of their hearts. God's no less God. God has no less power. God has no less compassion. God has no less interest. God has no less concern. God has no less in this program. You and I, through our belief, through cold heartedness and our belief, have limited God. 
whole conference with us. And if we can ever get anything done to us, then God can do something with us. That's our problems. May God help us to realize it. We have not because we ask. We have because we, not because we ask the need. First thing we're going to get in pain because we don't ask the need. He that keeps on seeking, he that keeps on loving, gets it. And he that keep on asking receive. But my friends, we did not because we asked not. We had it so easy in America. And whether I pray or whether I don't. Whether I have any faith or whether I don't. Whether I ask or what I don't. Good old God just passed out to me. He said we receive not because we ask not. That is, we're asking for our own selfish lust and selfish and use it on self, not to bring any glory to God. He won't give it to us either. Let it to God. God would do a lot more for me if I'd ask him. What about you? If you ask him so much, you get a thing that he do for you. But I'm frank to confess mine this morning. I get a lot more from God if I ask God. And I get a lot more if I didn't ask it for myself. Well, I ask it for his word. That's for his word. So that I'm limited to God as to what he does for me. Are you limited to God as to what he does for you? There are unbelief limited now. The whole one of Israel. We stop to realize over the book of Malachi, he tells us something over there is in play. Turn read it to you so you can pull that back down. Malachi, the third chapter, in the level plus. I'll give the fire for your sakes, and ye shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast a fruit before the time of the field, saith the Lord of hosts. But, throw me here with. See, I don't know a lot of things for you. Destruct! Prove it! Out of the pit, God has never done as much for me as he wants. God has never done as much for you as He wants to. You have a position yourself to receive. But I have limited God by not letting Him give me only my position. And so many of us are scared to put more in a bucket than you want. I've seen people pray for the power of God to come on and have a need of heaven pray. But when the power starts coming, they want to put a little of their money and stop in their jail. Pray they'll get more. And they can't. Well, God knows how much you can. No need to spend a little. Except there will be saints of truth. Just see if I won't open up the windows of heaven and pour you out more blessings in your sin. A lot of folks get afraid when they say they're going to pour you out more in your cold. Afraid it'll spill over on somebody and they think you're cracked up or wrong shoulder over your baptistic or emotional or something. So you really don't want God to give you too much so you can be a nice, quiet, Christian gentleman or lady. This goes so far, God. But don't run my book at all. I'm convinced God would make a lot of us over fours if we'd let him. Because there's a lot of folks need a drink of our overflow. Out of these shall flow rivers, but we want to remain still.
Tiet nevis būtu. Nevis tā. A lot of people are thirsty and dry down the road today. I've had life today because you and I have never been really flown with us. That's all I know. Yet God would have us His chance. God would have us His witness to flow to people. But we just want to help ourselves. It's become stagnated to almost us. Where we don't enjoy it anymore than God. Then, let's look at some of this. All this man. We could just get back and enjoy the cucumber on you and dry and stuff. How juicy and delightful it was. If I could just go back to tickle the sensations of the flesh and satisfy the passions and the desires of the nature. Ha! Thrill of me! But this thing of being always all in the leadership of the Spirit of God, how miserable I've got. God is limited. Whoops. Not only that. <clears throat> But we by bringing down the creator to the standard of the creature. We're trying to pull God down on our level. Our standards. God said it because we got so many Christians who want God to come down to their standards of living, their way of thinking. God's thoughts is higher than our thoughts and God's ways is higher than our ways. But we're trying to pull God down on our thinking and on our ways and we ain't really getting it. Because God ain't going to come. But when you and I make up our mind, we're going up God's thoughts. We're going up on God's way. Then God can use us. You hear this Baptist preacher. If God used the most of us Christians on the level we are on this morning, it would dethrone God. It would lessen the public appearance of thinking on God. We want people to think on God as we think. We want people to see God's action as we are. We're trying to pull God down to our way of thinking what's right and what's wrong. And trying to pull God down on the level to do as we think we ought to do. And we're limiting God. Because God is not coming down to the standard of which. I don't get shocked at it. But the great percent of you who sit here listening this morning are more concerned about what the people think of you. And they are the standards of people than you are the standards of God. You say, first read the wrong! No, I'm not. Some of you never ask God how you want to dress. But you let the standard of dress decide how you dress or don't dress. Hmm? Some of you never ask God where you ought to go and what you ought to see. But you let your crowd you run with decide where you're going and what you're going to see and what you talk about. We're limited to God saying, God, you let us talk about what we want to talk about, go where we want to go, dress or undress like we want to dress, and run to the crowd we want to run. And God, we can't let you tell us how to do God says, for women to wear breeches is an abomination in the sight of God. But you don't care what, how much abomination is in the sight of God. You want to be like 
the rest of the little sisters are all right. You don't care what God said. You don't want to dress in modest apparel and be so godly that folks will find out you're godly. You want to find out you're one of them. You're one of them. Face reality. You're limited in God. By trying to give God to lower His standards of being a public people. <coughs> you know, same thing. We want to go back to the flesh way, the world way, rather than separate and be identified only with Christians. Trying to bring God down on our level. We're limited him. Then by disbelieving his word, he is declared he can do everything. Does the word say there's nothing impossible with him? Really, we don't believe God can do anything he wants to do and would do if we submit to let him do. Really? We don't believe God can do anything. We the devil's brainwashed us and browbeat us and a lot of other things around us is so caught us up in it that my brother and sister, we don't even believe God can shake a matter of anymore. I hear a lot of preachers and a lot of leaders say, we can't have a revival in America anymore. But if God wanted to, had in the mud of the habit with it. A lot of preachers don't want God to have a revival, and a lot of church people don't want to have God to have a revival and have to clean up and admit that out of the line, and they don't want to be made alive. So if it took that to do God pain, God won't. We're sort of glad that because the revival comes, it'll save a lot of their church members. Save the ones of the preachers. Yes. 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 Have they got more issues up? So we're limited, God, my friends, by disbelieving the word of God. All things are possible. If my people would to call the mind and tell up and says and seek my face and pray, and turn away from their wicked ways. That's what gets us. And turn it away from the wicked ways. We want to turn the world instead of wait on it. And I'll hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and leave their land on him. No, sir. I'll heal their land. Who said? God. But we don't believe it. He said, oh, I'm a preacher. I believe it. We look like we do something about it. Same way. We're living in God with our own belief. But don't believe God do what He said to do. Oh, yes, I think the word of God's true. But we don't believe it. Yeah, a lot of people say the word of God said it and I believe it. No, it's said it whether you believe it or not. Because I'm going to be honest to confess to you this morning, my friends, if folks had to believe it to make it so, it would be awfully untrue because there's thousands of Christians that don't even believe what God says. They don't believe God means it. They think of it as something. Oh, Sam, they don't believe God means it. We live it in God. But disbelief of his word, declaring that he can do everything. All things are possible with Christ. All of me, all of me, all things are possible with Christ. That's what the word said. We can do all things. Just a few things. No, all things through Christ and strengthens us. We can do all things. And it's in a tight and see. Afraid but don't. 
forgetting his past mercies in heaven. We limit God because we forgot. You remember that Jesus said when the Holy Spirit comes, he'll call to your remembrance things of the past. I want you to know practically every Christian sitting here this morning, God brought you out of some awful experiences. And you know, Perils of different kinds. He's delivered us from death. They're very things of danger and peril. And we saw him in experiencing him. Now, like it was early, disbelieve God. What? But so many of us again, God can't break the soul. And let you shoot at it, and let you believe that God took some of your sin, and some of your friends who take sin, that's trying to drag you down. You got you got a new situation. Hey! He got you out of the jaws of death. He brought what? Your fair life was in his hands. He took care of it. He did it. And afraid he can't bring you through some other. We are limited God because we forget the heaven. I look back. The right thing. He brought me to I get to think the truth. And he's the same kind of all things. God help us do this. Have they got you through it? Yeah. All those things. Still up his spine. He thinks of how close you come. He's going to go to the top. Yeah. Here they are. But he has to change. Why get shook up? And try to say the world's got us in the downhill pool. Ain't nothing we can do about it. And so, God got us out of one and get us out of another. Space it this way. God. You're trying to bring him down on our head? My unbelief. Unbelief. Turns God's face away from us. Closes his hands. God wants to have. But if we don't believe he can, his hands is closed with him. If we don't believe it, we turn we turned up. Listen. God's hand's not been shot that he can't reach in and save. God's ear's not turned dead that he can't hear. But our sins have separated between us and God. And he as it were saves. So we're limited God with worldly living and sinful living. God could save a lot of us if we get our sin God could hear a lot of our prayers if we get a lot of willingness and sin out of our lives. God's no death in any such thing. God's hand and shoulder up the key beats down there. What's wrong? I say to you. God still there. God's ear is still there. God's hand is still there. But we've got a veil of sin from us. And he can't reach down to the heavens. Limited love. Not only that, my friends. Either you according to your faith. We stop to remember, if you please. More of a brethren, I would not that she should be, but have it all our fathers who are under the cloud and all pass through the sea. We're all baptized under Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Did all eat of the same spiritual meat? 
Did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. That rock was Christ. But with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our example to the intent. We should not lust our evil things, as they also lust. Neither be ye idolaters, as with some of them, as it is written. People sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us take Christ as some of them also tempted to but destroyed and saved. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed and destroyed. And all of these things happened unto them for an example. They are written for our admonition on whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore let him that take his stand may he lest he fall. Stand! Stand! Don't lay down. You give up. Stand up! Stand up! A lot of folks get out in the boxing arena and knock it out. He flattens out and lays in the floor. But Paul is saying, you in the arena, go lay there. Get up, stand up, speak up, for God.